So we had this situation in the lab. So those studies, uh, that was Carolyn Rue's dissertation that was published in 2015. And she's amazing. But it's so funny. Like the truth in baseball behind those studies is like, Carolyn is like such a sweet, pro-social, good, make the world better human. Like she's, she's her heart is huge. And um, she was really into, you know, we both were interested in scarcity, but she was really into can it, what can we do to get scarcity to like make people do the right thing and make people help others. And I just rolled into that project like a dark cloud. And I'm like, it's not going to happen. Like people are going to take care of themselves. And what was kind of cool that we had these these really opposing perspectives was that, you know, in the lab, you're supposed to go in with these directional hypotheses and predictions like based on theory, you know what's going to happen before you test it. We didn't know. Like I was really strongly saying that people were going to become more selfish. And she was really strongly saying that people would actually take care of each other if the world was running out of stuff. And what was kind of cool in terms of writing the paper was you could draw on literature that supported either point. Mm -hmm. So my training is really like behavioral decision theory, which is a cousin of behavioral economics. And from that perspective, there's, a you know, again, the supply and demand curves. As the supply goes down, demand goes up. As gas gets more expensive, we will pay more for it. And paying more for it is a way of competing for it. So I had this more classical economic perspective that was like, look, people are going to compete harder for stuff that there's less of. Scarcity creates value, period. Whereas Carolyn, was, there's a whole other research stream, more from psychology, um, which looks at essentially the bottom of the pyramid. And what they find is really the lower you are in terms of the status hierarchy, people are more communal. They're more, they have higher levels of empathy. They're more likely to take care of each other. And she's saying, look, if we're making people feel like they don't have enough, why are you saying it's going to make them more competitive? Shouldn't it actually make them more cooperative based on this whole other literature stream? And I was like, all right, girl, this battle is on. We're taking this into the lab and we're going to see what happens. So we ran about 10 hundred million studies to test this uh, <laughs> because because yeah. invariably we're going to say some literature is wrong. And when you do that, you really have to support your point. Right. And I sort of won in that we did see like with these classic economic games, which are boring and you most of the people listening, I apologize in advance because they're tedious. But these classic economic games like the dictator game, et cetera, when you have to allocate resources between yourself and an anonymous other person, what do we see in the lab? Well, we saw what we're seeing with the freaking toilet paper in the stores right now. People were putting themselves first, right? Everybody's taking care of themselves. They didn't give the other people nothing, but they just made sure that they had their own base covered before they, like, I like to think of it like in the plane when you put on your own oxygen mask first. So that's what we saw over and over again. And then we started to enter into this, like, publication process, which is Raj knows well, Raj just got an excellent publication out. Congratulations. Um, but the publication process is long, right? And you've got a million reviewers weighing in. And of course, there's people on the review team that are like Carolyn that are saying, this doesn't make any sense, right? Because look at the people at the bottom of the pyramid. Those are the kind hearted, generous souls taking care of each other. You know, how can you how can you reconcile these results? Mm -hmm. So basically, we had to find at least one factor that would push around whether or not people responded to scarcity by, basically we had to show it could work both ways because we had to reconcile these conflicting viewpoints, which is, which is fine and which is very normal in academia. So we did take like, we took a, an easy route to doing that, which is basically that if people, as we show, when they experience scarcity, when they're reminded of resource scarcity, they're like looking to put themselves first and advance their own self-interest, it should be true that they then become more likely to help others if they view helping others as a way to help themselves. And it's this form of impure altruism, right? Where people are giving to get, but I will still say, I don't think that's a bad thing, right? I think that highlighting, you know, it, here in the West, I mean, you have to remember, we ran these studies mostly on Northwestern undergraduates. So these are people largely in positions of privilege here in the United States. I'm not saying it's gonna replicate for all cultures. And in fact, I think there's good reason to believe it might not, but here in the United States, that's the pattern we're seeing. I never had a problem with the fact that when people are reminded of scarcity, if they're doing the right thing, they're doing it for the quote unquote wrong reasons. I think if you're, UNICEF, we did dependent variables like whether or not people donated to charity, for example. I think if you're UNICEF, you're not too judgy about what gets people donating to help the children of the world. I think they're just happy that people are contributing. And that's the perspective I try to take. Even though scarcity can lead us to put ourselves first, it doesn't mean we're necessarily gonna tear others down. And especially during this pandemic, right, we do, we have to reconcile the reality that having sick people among us is bad for everybody. Yeah. So taking care of ourselves means taking care of each other. And again, if that gets us to be a little bit more courteous, a little bit more thoughtful, to maybe think about the bottom of the pyramid, even if we're in the middle of the pyramid, I'm, I'm okay with that.